Hi, I'm Biman and this is the final part of the immersive base building guide. All the things we've built before were actually exercises meant to show you how to build parts required for the one thing everyone wants to build, a medieval castle. The easiest way to build a castle is to use something I like to call the universal castle building block, which is actually the foundation of the tower we built earlier. I'll start with the round tower, then extend the wall, just like we did with the terrace and create another tower base at the end. Now it is important to make only 90 degree turns and keep all the walls the same length. In this way the shape can be completely closed, in the courtyard paved over with square foundations or if left it bare, you can make a great looking cloister using the stair trick just like we did in part 2 with the captain of the guards barracks. The thickness of the wall can be increased with wedge foundations on one or both sides. Once the first square is done, you can add more in the same manner, to create inner and outer bailey, a citadel or even a city with multiple layers of walls and fortifications inside. Also, consider what to do with the inner space. You can keep it open and add small buildings later like stables, forges, etc. or close it off to make impressive great hall. After the foundations are laid, simply build up the towers and then add walls in between them. It's as simple as connecting the dots. As for the tower base, it can be expanded as much as you like. To add another ring, use alternating squares and wedge foundations. So, connect the square to the wedge, then fill the gaps with wedges. I found it especially useful for making much collations on top of the towers. I bet you're curious what you can actually build using such a simple technique. Well, take a look. This is a relatively small castle consisting of outer and inner bailey, a citadel and barbican protecting the main gate. Here are the foundations for the castle. As you can see, it's just the tower from part 1, repeated 10 times with the length and width of the terrace adjusted as needed to fit the terrain. Here is the barbican, the outer bailey, inner bailey and citadel. Notice the tower here on the outer wall. The radius of the tower is not divisible by the length of the square foundation. So since I wanted a gatehouse flanked by two towers between the outer and inner bailey, I had to add this tower to the wall here, so that the total length of the inner bailey walls remained the same on both sides. Once I decided on the layout, it was just a simple matter of building the towers as we did in part 1 and connecting them with the walls. Then I added defensive features. The balconies on the walls and tops of some towers are called machicolations. I've built them just like the balcony in part 1 and fortified them in similar way as the gates in part 2. Here's how they work. Machicolations are the holes between wall and the battlement. Here the inverted sloping walls work as corbels to hold the battlement and I've used hatches to make machicolations. So, if enemy is far away, I can simply shoot them over the crannels and I can engage those near the wall through the machicolation. Machicolations should be placed on any wall or tower that is accessible from the ground level and above the gates. I've also placed them on the interior walls to turn the baileys into kill zones. I've kept this place free of any decorations, so you can clearly see the main structure. Later, I'll finish it and post a proper video tour but for now here's a sneak peek inside. My next tutorial series will focus on castles. I'll show you other building techniques, talk about design, defensive features and historical aspect of castles. The tutorial will be mostly about European medieval castles, but it will also include defensive structures built in other times and places. If you haven't done so, consider subscribing so you won't miss it. Thank you for watching, build great stuff! Cheers!